To further illustrate how this concept plays into overall athletic performance and everyday life, just such as like bending down, twisting, picking things up, reaching up off a shelf or something like that, okay, I want you to make a fist. Now with that fist, I want you to try to like press or like move quickly out to the side, okay? Now I want you to stay loose and fire out or then reach, okay? When it's loose, you're able to expand, okay? Or create power and force a lot better than when it's tight okay which is just a very easy illustration to say that like if my shoulder complex and nape or like neck area or my hip area and thigh is tight because they're now having to be forced to be used as postural muscles okay i am going to have a very large decreased range of motion if I have a decreased range of motion and I have tension, okay, and I try to like catch myself, or if I go to like lift something up, okay, or try to like run or something like that, one, I'm, I'm just not going to be able to produce as much overall efficiency. But two, a tight muscle going under rapid expansion is much more likely to get injured than a loose muscle undergoing rapid expansion. Okay, that's just basic physics um, and biomechanics. Okay, so one thing to think about is your body needs proximal stability to create distal mobility. Okay, proximal stability is what we've been talking about to create distal mobility. Okay, so one thing you can kind of do here to really check to see if something is like more of a neurological restriction in range of motion or an actual physical restriction in range of motion, such as like uh, joint shape or fibrotic contractures of the connective tissues and stuff like that, is if you have someone, okay, say like tight pec, reach back, okay, now the pec is gonna tie into the anterior oblique sling, okay, create a loose abdomen, tight pec, tighten your abdomen on that, have the person tighten their abdomen, and their arm might get a lot more range of motion. What that's telling you is cortically, once they are able to integrate proper proximal stability or respiratory function, they create distal mobility. So in that case, don't waste your time doing a bunch of tissue work because it's not a tissue problem. It's not a contracture of the shoulder capsule. It's a neurological tightening of the anterior shoulder muscles or thorax muscles because they don't know how to properly create stability throughout their anterior oblique ch chain or sling through their abdominal cavity. Now, you can do the same thing for the hip. Look, okay, does their and right superior to left inferior oblique sling on the anterior portion of their body have tightness? Does their left hip correlate with tightness in their right shoulder well that could be two individual problems and you will learn throughout your coursework at school how to check joint ranges of motion but you could also just do a quick test by teaching them how to brace properly and then check those things and odds are i found in my experience most people will experience large changes of range of motion and overall joint capacity when you just neurologically and cortically integrate their respiratory and abdominal subsystems to allow for again proximal stability to create distal mobility.